welcome back. I thought it was time for an update video, kind of a FAQ kind of video. Um, over the past few years, we've had some comments here and there, and some of them kind of run along the same theme. Um, some people asked some questions, so I thought I would update you on a couple of those videos. So I've got four of them here that we're gonna kind of give a quick rundown. The first one um, was the pigeon story video. This was one that I did about a year and a half ago or so. And if you look, um, sorry, right up here, there'll be a link there to that video if you want to click over and see that. Um, but basically we had a pigeon that stopped by our house and this was somebody's pet pigeon, uh, maybe a homing pigeon that, that was banded. And um, so people have asked a lot of questions, what happened to that or if we kept it or, or whatever. Um, so as the, the video ended, uh, we were kind of up in the air as to what to do because the pigeon we had tried releasing it we tried finding the owner um, we weren't successful in any of that um, we even released it at a, a local park and it flew back to our house so uh, what we did was uh, we kept it for I think just a couple more days after that and we tried to release it or you know let it free around here and see if it would just fly home so um, it did end up leaving um, and the day, I think it was like a day after it left, a local news station came by and did a story on this. And it was, I think a couple days past that, that I did find the owner. There was somebody that posted a comment, um, I think on Facebook, that they thought that they knew who the owner was. So I contacted him and it was in fact um, the, the owner of that pigeon. And he was very disappointed that um, he couldn't get his pigeon back because um, we, you know, we set it free basically and it flew away and it never came back. So we didn't have the opportunity, unfortunately, to return the pigeon. So I don't know if it got caught by, you know, a, like a hawk or something like that, which I think they sometimes do, but, um, I don't think that it flew back to its owner. I don't really know. Um, but all I know is the pigeon is gone and unfortunately the, the owner didn't get his pigeon back. So... Not the greatest ending to the story, but just an update in case you're curious about that. Um, the second one was the Croc Pickles video. So again, click the link up here to watch that video. And that was kind of our first attempt at fermenting any kind of vegetable. So some of the comments that we got were relating to the fact that I put vinegar in the brine. And um, that was just the recipe that I followed at the time and I didn't know a lot about fermenting foods so I didn't really know any better know what the difference would be for that. Um, based on one of your comments down below or below that video um, somebody mentioned the older recipes for fermenting pickles like that will include some vinegar in there just to help it keep longer because um, back in the day they would keep their pickles like in a crock in a cellar or a basement or a, a cold closet or something like that so it needed a long shelf life and the idea is that the vinegar would help keep it longer nowadays when we ferment a lot of things um, we'll just do the salt water brine and it's fine in the refrigerator you know we don't have to worry about keep it in the cellar or anything like that so I was just following a recipe and yes, they did ferment. Um, they definitely fermented, I can confirm that. I think there wasn't enough vinegar in there to kill the bacteria for that process to happen. It was just a little bit in there probably to help control the level of bacteria or something. I don't really know the science behind it, but they turn out good. The other comment on there that I've seen is how I put the dill in there. I put the entire stalk, stem, blossoms, leaves, the whole thing in there. Um, just because when my mom did pickles when I was growing up, I, I don't remember how much of that she put in there, but I don't think it was just the blossom. So I just threw the whole thing in there, and I don't think it affected anything negatively at all. Um, so I guess if you are doing pickles in a jar, you probably want the more flexible parts of the plant, you know, the blossom and, and things like that. Um, probably works better, but it was okay with the whole thing in there. Going along the lines of fermenting foods was the pickled carrots. So click the link above there to view that one. Um, one of the biggest comments we got on that one was the use of the solo cup kind of cut into, um, I guess we'll call a stopper for the top of the jar to keep the vegetables below the surface of the brine. Um, it worked really well. I don't have a name for it or I don't know if there's anybody that manufactures something like that that would be it just as cheap, but um, it did really work well for that. So click on that video to see how to make one of those. Um, worked great. 
And the last one is the Skid Free Couch episode. And we get comments on this one sometimes. Um, people wondering if that held up, if it still works, if the glue came off, if it broke down. Um, so I will say that was, a th that was three years ago that we shot that video. And I'm sitting on the couch that we did that on and it is still working. And I'm going to have Bob take the camera, or actually I'll take the camera. Bob is going to lift up the couch and I'll show you, or I'll try to show you the bottom of the foot of the couch so you can see that it hasn't broken down or crumbled or anything like that. And this couch stays put. It does not slide at all, at all. So this has worked excellent. Cheap, cheap idea. So click on that video link as well to watch that. Okay, so you can see the bottom of that is still just fine. Um, it has held up really well. It's not crumbling. It's not peeling. It's not breaking apart. It's sticking really good to that. So it's in really good shape. So yes, that worked fantastic, and I'm really, really happy with it. You guys should try that too. In fact, we have a love seat that I need to put that stuff on as well because that one slides around quite a bit. So thanks, guys, for all the comments that you made and all the great suggestions and ideas for videos and new things to try. I really do appreciate that. And also thank you for subscribing. Make sure to hit that button if you haven't already. And thank you for clicking the thumbs up button. And don't forget to hit that little bell over there as well. That will keep you notified and up to date when I put out new videos. So keep the comments coming, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.